all right, grounded. We need to have a talk. You know, it's it's been like six months now, and there's some serious issues that need to be addressed. Why is stuff sinking into the game? The game, the the ground, the, the game is called grounded. It's called grounded. The last thing that should be buggy and glitchy in a game called grounded is the ground. What up? It's a discussion video here on Tiny Pirate Gaming. And in this video, we're talking about 10 fixes that are needed and grounded with the next update or before it with hot fixes. But there's some gameplay and game mechanic issues that should be improved for the player's experience at this point, six months into the early access. So let's get into this with number one. Number one. This takes way too long. We shouldn't have to just stand here pressing the same button over and over and over and over and over and over and over again when we're just trying to craft, you know, crude rope with the plant fiber that we're carrying. We should be able to, to set it to craft as much as we're carrying that it can craft with. And I'm not talking about this for everything. I mean, like, maybe for everything if you're carrying that many materials around, but definitely for stuff like crude rope and bug rubber and fiber bandages and berry leather, the stuff that you're making a lot of, there should be some sort of multi-craft option to just enhance the player's experience when they're playing the game. Number two. All right, third person bow aiming. And honestly, I think maybe third person aiming in general, at least in Xbox. I don't know how it works in the PC. It might be a little bit better, but I feel like in Xbox, the cursor is not actually where you are looking in third person. It's a little bit off center, and I think it needs to be, needs to be tweaked a little bit because trying to aim a bow in third person is crazy. It's so hard. The, the player avatar should be see-through. Uh, the opacity should be changed when you are aiming with the bow in third person so that you can see what you're aiming at. These are just my suggestions. And as a side note to this one, I also want to say stuff should stop falling through the ground. It should stop falling. Why is... Why do the blueberries fall through the ground? Why does other why do the bugs sink into the ground? Why is stuff sinking into the game? The game, the, the ground, the, the game is called grounded. It's called grounded. The last thing that should be buggy and glitchy in a game called grounded is the ground. So get a get why is stuff sinking into the ground? Get a get a handle on that. Anyway, let's get on to the next one. Number three. This, this, the spinning wheels. There should be a faster way to load and unload the spinning wheels because standing here doing it one at a time just like the multi-craft and then trying to pick up the completed spinning wheel products underneath at that little tray especially if you're in third person and the the cursor is off center as i just mentioned in the last one this this can be a very tedious task so just make a a quicker way a faster a multi-load and a multi-unload it would, it would greatly improve the player experience. Number four. And this one's just like the last one. It's the smoothie maker. Why? And, the, and like the multi-craft. Why isn't there a way for us to do this faster? We should be able to load entire stacks into the smoothie maker of 10 or more before we craft the smoothies so that we just have to press the button like one time and make like 30, 40, 50 smoothies, however many smoothies we're making this you go through those smoothies real quick. You go through those smoothies real quick. So give us a multi-craft option for the smoothies as well, Obsidian. Put a fix like that in the game. These are just quality of life improvements for the player that I believe would up ground its quality even during the early access because it's already a great, fun, amazing little build game. It would just up its quality for the player experience just, just a little notch. That would make it so much more enjoyable and maybe it would bring a lot of the players who left a while ago back into the game especially if in the february 7.0 7.0 update you're bringing in a whole bunch more content but i want you guys to focus a little bit on more in the fixes 
than the content at this point because with the bees and with the fireflies you've really livened up the backyard to the point that it's a really fun experience now you need to address some of these little buggy issues that's why i made this video i hope you watch it number five now this one's been an issue for a while and i hear you guys are going to add more ants there's going to be another ant hill added to the game yeah i follow all sorts of news about about grounded i know i know a lot about grounded just because i don't put videos out about it that's because there's other videos out there and i don't want to repeat Repeat content, unless it's tutorial based. I will do some tutorial videos if I can. But but the anthill, the anthill lag. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. You all know what I'm talking about. It has been an issue in the game for a while. And we as the player base have desperately been trying to find a way to correct it. Now the anthill lag usually doesn't start until about, I wanna say day 60 to 90 to 120 is when the anthill lag really starts to take effect and you start thinking about what you're going to do. By the time you get to day 200, you're like, oh, crap biscuits. I got to get this under control. And you start searching the internet and you will come across the Lowry Ant Trap. That's what I call it. It was invented by the Mike Lowry Show. And it is a system for attempting to exterminate the ants and their overpopulation, which appears to be causing the lag. They also get stuck in the walls sometimes. Again, the ground, they sink into the ground sometimes. And I believe there are some stuck in the ground, which also increases the lag. So of course I built one of these in the attempts to stop them. And the, the, the player, and it does, killing the ants, if you go in there, if you rock some ladybug armor, if you don't want to build one of these, you can, you can wear some ladybug armor and have your mint mallet and go down there into the ant hill, and just bash them. It's bastion time and get in there and you bash all the ants and it will create the same effect as building one of these traps. These traps just automate the system so you don't have to keep doing that because the ants will die. The ants will all die. And then you have to come over here and fight your way through the lag because there will be so many ant corpses all about your, your traps that you, you have to clean them up. Otherwise, the lag just gets outrageous. Outrageous. But, but in doing this, you can also get a bunch of ant eggs. Uh, so there's a little reward. Plus, one thing I also noticed, and I will be covering this in another video too, is I was in stream. I stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash tinypirategaming. But I, uh, I don't have a set schedule, so I just announced it on my Twitter. So if you want to know when I'm going to do it, you can check the ground Discord, I guess, because I stream link drop in there. But uh, you can also follow me at Twitter which is where I really announce it. And I announce it usually like 10 minutes to 15 minutes before I'm gonna go live because I, I just play by ear, I play by ear. But anyway, the, the, I discovered that even if you build one of these, the ants will attempt to congregate in the back of the anthill and try to phase through the ground to get to the bottom of their anthill. So this is, a, this is an issue that needs to be addressed. I don't know what the issue is exactly or what's causing it, but it seems to be an overpopulation of ants or overactivity or the ants sinking into the ground or I don't know, but it needs to be fixed, especially if you're bringing in another ant hill. So get on that obsidian. Thank you. These are fixes that are needed in the ground with February update 7.0 or with the 7.0 update, whenever you guys decide to drop it. Number six, the clay, the pebblet floors. These foundations, these foundations do not clip properly and in a building game, having proper foundations, especially the cool, the cool pebblet and clay ones. I like to build stuff with these. I really like these foundations for my building projects and them not being able to clip properly, especially in places where they should, like it needs to be fixed. It needs to be fixed. I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. And you guys did sort of fix it with the 6.2 update. It's, it's, I'm, I, had, I was doing a stream the other night, and one of one of the viewers said, "It's like 97% finished. It's like 97% fixed, but you got to get that last three percent under control, okay? Okay, I'm saying these are fixes, but serious fixes that need to be done that will just up your game. It'll literally like notch up your game so many little like like awesome points." 
It'll give you so many more awesome points. And everyone needs awesome points. You know, like like you get the little stars on your report cards. And like, you know, and, 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 and it's like the 90s, right? So you get your little stars and your little smiley face. You get your little dare shirt on. And it's the 90s again. And let's get, let's get, come on. Let's get these foundations under control so we can build awesome castles. That's what I want to build with these foundations. Oh, these amazing, gigantic walls all around the backyard made of pebble foundations. It's going to be so cool. It's going to be so cool. But you got to fix them for me first. Got to make sure they clip. They got to be able to clip, especially into the ground. It's like they don't recognize the ground sometimes. Why do things not recognize the ground in the game grounded? Anyway. Number seven. What the crap biscuit is this? I thought this was over. I thought this was handled. I thought this was no longer an issue. This wasn't even supposed to be in my 10 fixes. I had to drop a fix off to add this one because while filming for this one, I discovered this in my storage shed, that the dry grass has begun to ignore the fact that you have destroyed the stall. And it is now regrowing through your buildings, through your buildings. This needs to be addressed, it needs to be fixed and you gotta make it so that these things disappear because I do not want to rip down all my buildings just to get rid of these stalks again so they won't grow back. If we have buildings there, they should definitely not grow back. And if we've destroyed the stalks, they should definitely, definitely, double definitely not grow back. So I wasn't even planning to add this in here, but while filming for it, this happens. And I'm destroying the, I will destroy them to the dirt level and they will come back. So. This issue really needs to be addressed as soon as possible. Number eight, multiplayer stability. This is a huge problem, especially since your game is advertised as a multiplayer game. Now I know it's, it's always getting a little bit better. I will admit that because I do play multiplayer on occasion with one of my friends. And when I went to go film like we had a horrible experience last week or a few weeks ago. We both crashed our games numerous occasions. We both got kicked on numerous occasions. And of course, I wasn't filming. We were just goofing around and playing. And so then I decided, well, let's, we, I got to film some footage because this is, you know, we got to get these issues out there so that I can put them in my fixes video. And so we went to, to play during my stream and we literally didn't really have that many issues now one of the issues we did experience is i still get the high ping message but it's not really a big deal but then i get this stuttering effect the stuttering effect when you're trying to run around where it's really the game trying to sync you up with the other player i believe um the other issue i really would like to see addressed in multiplayer is the stability because i am a per person who likes to perfect block and i like to go into other people's worlds and help them deal with the bugs they can't defeat, because I can. I, I practice fighting everything. I'm really good at fighting everything. I'm gonna have a whole series coming out on how to fight everything up close and personal in its face. It's passion time. But we're not there yet. I, haven't, I have to do all that. But anyway, that, I can't do that when I join other people's worlds and the bug attacks and then I go to perfect block and then like two seconds later I get hit because I can't time it right because there's like this weird delay. So that needs to be addressed. The other thing, and this might be the cause and effect resulting in the delay that is happening with players and is something that I think you guys should look into because as I've said on numerous occasions, I relate this game to very Minecraftian. It is very much like Minecraft in its build apparatus and the four player base building multiplayer co-op experience that Minecraft creates should be the staple of this franchise of grounded it should be your forte so when players load into a host's world like just like the host can see their amazing build like if they've built amazing stuff all around the backyard it's supposed to be very cinematic and very thematic but the draw distance for the joined players is so insignificant that they can only see a little bit of it. And my friend experienced like on my zip lines and in my bounce tower. He can't see the top of my bounce tower and the bottom of my bounce tower from the middle of my bounce tower. And I believe that his game is telling him that he is on a structure that is unsupported and it shouldn't exist. 
because his game is not rendering in the bottom of the tower. And then when he zip lines, He's just like, my. I'm ziplining into nothing. And I'm like, oh, don't worry. It'll spawn in a few seconds. And he'll be standing in the middle of a floating nothing after a zipline. And then the tower spawns in around him. And that's not, that's not fun for the non-host players of the game. So these are multiplayer issues that I think should be addressed. And I really don't have too much footage for this. But you all know it exists because I've seen it on numerous streamers, streams so everyone knows it's out there this is a big multiplayer issue and some people have even worse multiplayer issues i am going to mention this because other people might be like I, I can't even play multiplayer there there are even worse multiplayer issues for some people and i believe these need to be addressed if this game is going to because because its creativity and its uniqueness carried it this far but now the quality needs to follow through you got to follow through just like in sports if you guys have ever played sports and you're learning a technique in sports there's the follow through at the end, like like when you're swinging a bat for baseball. You don't stop once your bat makes contact with the ball. You follow through because it's that follow through motion that really gives us the talent. So now it's time for the Obsidian development team to have, you know, they got, they made contact with the ball. And now you just gotta follow through and this game can maintain its awesomeness. And then we can talk about its future potential because I believe it holds great potential. Number nine, burger quests. Burger quests for the pond. We never got any. What's what's the deal with that? Now at first I didn't think anything of it because I was like, well maybe they're just not going to add any burger quests until a later date. But then with the grounded 6.0 update back in January, we did. We did get quests. We got quests for the bees. We got quests for the mosquitoes. We got quests for the fireflies. We got quests to analyze the new materials. Why didn't we get that for the pond? Where are those updates? I use the Burgle Quest as a farming mechanism, and they also give players something to do. For now, until the story gets done and you add more content, the most common reason I see from players who are like, yeah, I used to play Grounded, but I don't play it anymore, is there's nothing to do for them. They've built some sort of awesome base already. They've already farmed a bunch of materials, and they just they need something more to do. And maybe if the Burgle Quest were sending them into more diverse ecosystems, they would feel inclined to do more in the game. They would want to build another base over here to make it a little bit easier when they do that. Or give us something, some other reward system. There's something else we can do with the raw science. A little mini game that we can, you know, gamble the raw science or something. Anything like that would just improve the, the player experience, which is really what this video is all about. 10 fixes to improve the player experience in Grounded with the 7.0 or before the 7.0 update. It'd be greatly appreciated by the player base. But yeah, the, why were there no burger quest for the pond? Why were there no hunt tadpoles, hunt water fleas, hunt diving bell spiders? We didn't get any of that. There was none of that. And I wanna know why, because I use the burger quest as a farming mechanism. And even though I have way too much raw science, I'll never need this much raw science. I, I still use it as a farming mechanism to gather resources to build awesome cool stuff. I just. I'm building an awesome cool city, so the more materials I can get, the better I can build awesome cool stuff to fill the city. Like there'll be things inside of all the buildings. You'll find cool chests and cool crates, but with all sorts of crazy stuff. But I never do pond stuff because your quests, the burger quests, never send me down in there, so I have to I have to make the decision to go down in there, and I do. But I really wish the burger bot would give me some quests. Tweet this video at the burger blog on Twitter. If you agree, if you like the suggestions and the fixes that I've brought up in this video, tweet this a link to this video at the Burgle Block so that the grounded dev team gets to take a peek at these fixes that I think the player base would really greatly appreciate. Number 10. All right, and this one's not really a fix. This one is just something cool that I think would really enhance the the liveliness of the backyard. It would really make the experience more immersive and it would be something you guys should really think about, not necessarily for the February update 7.0 or the March update 7.0, whenever you're gonna release it. The, but into the future, this is again, part of the potential I was talking about this game having. And that is a new dangerous creature. Now, when I talk about the dangerous creature, I'm not talking about like the koi fish. I'm talking about like the wolf spider, like a creature that we can actually fight 
but is extremely powerful and extremely difficult and can be extremely crafty and sneaky. You know, it's the most terrifying thing in the backyard for most players, other than the koi fish and the crow. If you ever make the crow interact with the player, I believe that will be as scary as the as the koi fish is. So, because we can't really fight that thing, not not at our size. But the there should be a new dangerous creatures. I believe in the different biomes. Like you got the wolf spiders everywhere. Keep that. The wolf spiders should be everywhere. But within each different biome like the hedge or you're adding the sandbox area and the and the uh the haze you got these different areas the pond and the wolf spider sort of everywhere the oak tree the wolf spider sort of everywhere but there should also be like a rival competitor for the wolf spider in certain regions now i've seen the praying mantis a lot of people talking praying mantis that would be a perfect addition and from what I'm hearing, the game is supposed to be taking place in the northeast of the United States of America. Praying mantises do exist in that area, so they would be regionally uh, a fit with the game. And they are very aggressive territorial creatures. And they could be a competitor for the wolf spider in, in controlling certain areas of the map. It would really make the game more fun. Plus, the wolf spider has no rival or competition within the backyard. You create a more diverse ecosystem, ultimately, that the player is now part of and trying to survive in, which really is the unique dynamic of your game, the shrunken survival aspect. So I believe there need to be more creatures like the wolf spider. And on top of that, the wolf spider and these other new, highly aggressive, highly powerful creatures should have territorial rivalries with the wolf spider. If they run into the wolf spider, if they both happen across you, the player. They should almost fight each other to see who gets, you know, because they're both after you, your prey for both of them. So they show up and they're like, this one's mine. And the wolf spider's like, nah, this one's mine. The praying mantis is like, shh. All right, let's do this. And the wolf spider's fangs are all like dripping venom. And then, and then you just get to watch as this crazy epic battle takes place between these two. Or you run for your life because they're both trying to get you. Get the crap, let's get out of there. But anyway, that would make the backyard very more alive. Just like the bees, the bees, the flying, the aerial bugs, they really, really enhanced the, the, they made the backyard feel more alive. And I believe a rival slash competition to the wolf spider would do the same. So just consider it, just think about it, grounded development team. This is the last fix or thing that I would like to see come in the future. But I would like to see a lot of those earlier fixes if you watched all the way to the end of the video. Those earlier fixes need to be addressed ASAP. But anyway, that's it. That's it. That's number 10. And I hope you guys, all of you, I hope the player base enjoyed this video. If you agree with me, you can let me know by smashing that like button. And let me know in the comments if you think there's any fixes or if you agree that I you know with the fixes i'm suggesting if you agree that these are good ideas that you would like to see implemented and grounded let me know in the comments and if there's other other great fixes or issues that you've encountered let me know those too in the comments so that i can understand more what other players are dealing with in the grounded universe so i know what more i can add to fix videos like this or or look be on the lookout for when i experience things in the game so anyway i hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more videos like this, more grounded themed, grounded related content, well then you can, you know, subscribe. You can subscribe to the channel. They'll be doing me a huge favor and I really hope this video earned your subscription today. And if you ever want to come hang out with me when I live stream, uh, we're on twitch.tv, you should also follow me at Twitter because that's where I announce when I'm going to live stream until I have a set schedule. Once I have a set schedule, that will be announced in YouTube videos and it'll probably be on my YouTube banner and I'll do a whole bunch of stuff to let people know when I'm creating a set schedule for my streaming. But for now, I announce it on my Twitter, which is, you know, twitter.com slash tiny, you know, at tiny power gamer. I'm a tiny power gamer. That's what, that's where I am on Twitter. So if you want to know when I'm going to live stream, you should follow me there. And that's where I announce it. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. And until next time. Arg, matey. Watch your step. There be a tiny pirate here.